from legendary locals we all know to people you should get to know. Follow Ipswich Today on your favourite app and never miss an episode or go to ipswichtoday.com.au. Coming up, the fallout continues after the second vote on Disaster Management Chairperson. Andrew Antonelli has now been endorsed twice as the chair of the Ipswich Local Disaster Management Group. Can Ipswich councillors now move forward in harmony after such deep divisions? It's Wednesday, May 29, 2024, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today during Reconciliation Week. Ipswich Today acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to Elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This is a story that just won't go away. Well, not just yet, anyway. Ipswich City Council held its second meeting of the new term on Thursday, May 23, in which Mayor Theresa Harding made a second and failed bid in as many meetings to secure the chair of the local disaster management group. Andrew Antonelli was voted in as chair twice in two meetings. Just a quick potted history here. Andrew Antonelli was LDMG chair when he was mayor and has many years' experience as a councillor in one of the most flood-prone divisions of the city. Antonelli issued a written statement last weekend stating he offered himself up to initially be deputy chair. On Monday, he spoke with Kelly Higgins-Devine on ABC Radio Brisbane. Here's part of what he had to say. Kelly began by asking why he thought the mayor was not elected chair. Well, I mean, I would think that you would have to speak to each individual councillor. I'm not here to speak on their behalf per se, but obviously um, there appears to be a lack of confidence in her ability to undertake that role. Why would that be if, as she has said, they've actually been praised by other organisations for what they've done? Well, they've got their personal reasons. Admittedly, I only intended to be uh, the deputy chair of that committee. I admittedly, as an outsider at the time of the 22 floods, uh, was quite uh, critical of Uh, the response from the council and many of the things that occurred during that time. But the reality is that um, uh, I believe the communication was very poor from uh, the council in relation to that event. Um, But I wanted to simply improve communication. It was the other councillors that approached me and said that they had no confidence in the ability of the mayor to communicate as a result of their own experiences with her and the roles. So with this then, how much information will you be passing on to Theresa Harding as mayor if and, well, let's face it, when a disaster does happen? Look, I think that um, the mayor is just throwing stones in order to try and get some political mileage out of this. But the reality is that I see my role as primarily being communication. Uh, And it has to be done that you inform the mayor and councillors as to what's going on. And that clearly wasn't being done sufficiently. Are you more skilled in this area? And and what are your credentials in this area? Oh, well, I spent 10 years in the Queensland Police Service, so I've had um, numerous examples of um, emergent circumstances uh, presented to me. I did serve in the role as the chair in my time as mayor, so... um, But the councillors feel that uh, probably my preeminent skill is communication. That was Andrew Antonelli speaking on Monday with Kelly Higgins-Devine on ABC Radio Brisbane. There's been an unusual amount of interest in this vote. Councillors who voted in favour of Antonelli have still not offered any public explanation behind their move, and that is what probably irks people the most. The Mayor revealed to Ipswich today she has written to the relevant Minister about making the Mayors of Queensland Councils automatically the local disaster management chair. Last week, I approached all councillors and the mayor and asked if there had been any complaints about each other to the Office of the Independent Assessor. Not surprisingly, I didn't hear back from everyone, but it is possible trivial complaints to the OIA have contributed to a breakdown in professional relationships. The question being asked by many is that after two meetings in the new term, has the council become dysfunctional? Or is it just one issue which has overshadowed the many agenda items they agreed to? Others are asking, does the mayor need to change her approach to leadership? Do you believe councillors can continue to function in the best interests of the community? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Send me a note via the Ipswich Today website. 
And in case you're wondering, Andrew Antonelli was approached to appear on the show. And that's it for this episode. Just a reminder, you will find handy links in the show notes. And if you've missed the council meeting on May 23, it's available to watch on YouTube. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is listener supported. Please make a once only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio, or play Ipswich Today on smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening. Enjoying Ipswich today? Please share the love on your socials.